Hello and welcome. My name is Paul Aubin, and today I'd like to talk to you about creating 3D views in Revit Architecture 2010. One of the greatest benefits of working in Revit Architecture is its ability to create multiple views of the same work area. Perhaps one of the most exciting and powerful views is the various 3D views Revit allows us to create. They essentially fall into two categories. We have isometric views and we have camera views. Let's go ahead and take a look. Here on screen I have a simple 2D floor plan view. If I go over to the View tab and notice the 3D View button, you will see that there's actually three options. Today we're going to look at the default 3D view and the camera view. When you choose the default 3D view, Revit will look at your 3D views category in your project browser searching for the view named 3D with curly brackets around the name. So I like to call that curly bracket 3D. If it finds this view, it will simply open it up and display it on screen in whatever state it happens to be in. If it does not find that view, then it will create the view as a southeast oriented isometric view. Now there's a lot of things that we can do once we have this view. We can of course zoom and pan as I'm doing with the wheel mouse. We can grab hold of our view cube here and rotate the view around to spin it from different angles. We can use the surfaces of the view cube to orient the view directly to one of those surfaces. We can even orient between surfaces by choosing the highlighted zones between different views, such as the corner zones, which will give us an isometric from another direction. We can spin the turntable. And if we use the navigation bar, which is typically on by default uh, over here on the right hand side of the view, we can even turn on the steering wheel feature, which will allow us to highlight over certain areas and navigate around the view using the various tools like zoom, pan, and orbit. So you simply drag the wheel over the area that you would like to work with. So that's a simple overall 3D view. But a much more powerful way to create 3D views is to start looking at views that give us a more detailed look at our building model. If I return to my first floor plan, you will see that I have a variety of sections scattered around this plan. For example, this section right here, which gives me a nice look at the stair and elevator tower in the lobby of my building. Now, it might be nice to look at this view in 3D. Unfortunately, however, if I try to uh, orbit this view, all I get is pan. A 2D view cannot be orbited as a 3D view. So what we need to do is create a new 3D view based on this section. It turns out that's pretty easy to do. So let's go over here back to our default 3D view that we just created. So best practice is to go ahead and rename this view before we get started. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on it and choose rename and I'm going to rename this as 3D at stairs. Now that I've renamed the, new, the view, my next step is to right click anywhere on my view cube and a menu will appear. I'll choose the orient to view option and several categories will appear. I'll choose my sections category and you'll notice here that I have a section named section at the vertical circulation. And I'm going to go ahead and choose that view. Revit will instantly orient the 3D view directly to this section and if we zoom in we can see that it matches the section we were just looking at but more importantly if I start to drag my view cube you'll now see that this is actually a 3D view that I can interact with in a three-dimensional way. So I can orbit it around spin it around using the same tools that I was using in my previous 3D view. Furthermore, if I want, I can take this box here and using these small uh, shape handles make adjustments to uh, the cropping of the view to make it a little bit different than the way that the section occurred. So I can begin to section through parts of the model in ways that make it a little bit more valuable for whatever design exploration I'm uh, trying to achieve. I can even come down here and turn on the shading mode and uh, if I added some lighting and so forth I could even turn on shadows and so on. If I don't want this box to display I simply select it, go up to the hide 
uh, option that appears on the ribbon and choose elements and that box will temporarily disappear. Uh, anytime I'd like to get that box back, I can click the small uh, light bulb icon down here at the base of the screen. Hidden elements will appear in this sort of maroon color. I can select the element and then over here on the ribbon I can choose the unhide element and then close the mode and the box will return and I can make modifications. Now it should be noted that modifying this section box does not affect the section view. So if I come over here and look at the vertical circulation section um, you'll see that we are not seeing the back wall and vice versa. If I select this box and drag it this way and then go back to my 3D at stairs you will see that that did not add more to the section over here on the side. So once the two views uh, are created they remain independent. However you can always right click again return to orient to view and reorient it to that section and it will now match the current state of your section view. So with a little practice you'll get the hang of it and you'll find that it's uh, quite useful. Now let me show you one other example that you might find helpful. Sometimes people like to see a floor plan view in 3D. So here's a second floor view and perhaps I want to study uh, how things are shaping up here in this view in 3D. Well I already have the floor plan uh, created, it's ready to go. I'm going to click my 3D button once again. You'll notice that I got the default 3D just like we did before, curly bracket 3D. Let's go ahead and rename this and we'll call it second floor. And then we'll right click our view cube go to orient to view under floor plans and we'll choose floor plan 02. Just like that it will orient, we'll spin it around and you'll see that we now have a three-dimensional slice through the building that matches the view range of the second floor plan view. And uh, the final form of 3D view would be to create a camera view. Now a camera view is how you create a perspective in Revit architecture. So rather than uh, creating an orthographic view like the first two, uh, here I just simply click with my mouse where I want to stand with my camera and I drag to where I want to look and click again and Revit will generate a 3D view uh, of a camera uh, at that location. And it's as simple as that. Uh, with a few quick adjustments I can adjust the angle of the camera lens, make it more of a wide angle. I can include more in the scene. If we turn on the steering wheel, we can adjust the view that we're seeing within the camera frame by dragging it around, making adjustments. We can change the looking up and down, like so. Maybe want to look up a little bit, close that, stretch this box up slightly, let's turn on shading with edges, and uh, finally if you click the boundary you can even click the crop size and you can set the size that you'd like uh, the, cam uh, the view to be when you drag it on a sheet uh, for printing. And uh, that's the two ways that you can create 3D views in Revit Architecture. Thank you very much for watching.